Hopper over Gross Jared Soda. I just want to talk about a few things today and that's the difference between paying cash, financing, or leasing a vehicle. What might be best for you? The first thing is paying cash. I think we all get a pretty good grasp of that. And it's simply going to be the price of the vehicle plus Uncle Sam. He's going to want to charge you some tax, right? That's based off your county. And so is the DMV is going to be based off your county for registration or brand new plates with registration. Now, the last thing is going to be a dealer fee. Every dealership I know in the state of Wisconsin charges a dealer fee. And the reason why is we actually have to hire a bunch of non-commission based employees to keep your paperwork safe over a seven year period required by the state of Wisconsin. So when you add all those up, we give you that total, you give us the money and great, the car is yours. We're done. But what happens next? You might not have the money to buy a $40,000 vehicle right this second, or you might not want to give us that money right away. So then you're going to finance a vehicle. Now, what's important to know about financing a vehicle in the state of Wisconsin, I don't even think I need to write this on this board, is that you charged an interest rate, of course. But what a lot of people don't know is there's no prepayment penalty in the state of Wisconsin, which is a beautiful thing. And what does that mean for you as a consumer? Well, in some states, there is prepayment penalty, which means they can either charge you a fee or charge you interest even on a vehicle that you pay off early. Now, in the state of Wisconsin, it doesn't work that way. If you got a loan for three months and right at that last payment and you pay off the vehicle, you've only paid three months worth of interest to keep things simple. Um, or if you pay anything above your monthly payment, it goes straight to principal, meaning that amount over, let's say you had a $300 payment and you give us, give the lender $400. The lender can only charge you that interest on that 300. That extra hundred now is getting wiped free of being charged of interest down the road. The reason why this is a powerful tool is a lot of people try to get the shortest term they're comfortable with because in their mind which does make a lot of sense shorter terms can have a lower rate plus it's a less amount of time they're going to be charging you interest on it but the one thing i want to make clear is that's not always the best case one a lot of terms when you're getting shorter and shorter and shorter actually will end up with the same rate and second you can always pay more than your monthly payment and not get charged interest on that, which get, is an excellent tool. So that way, if you're in a financial hardship or you're going on vacation and you wanted a couple extra bucks to spend, you could pay that actual payment instead of more than the payment. And now you're more than comfortable to do so. And then when you have some extra cash laying around, throw it towards that payment, pay more than what you owe for that month. And now you're erasing interest. But the last one I wanted to talk about is leasing. So, what is a lease? I want to get it out of the way. It is not renting a car. I hear that so often. I would never lease because it's renting a car. It is not renting a car. It is actually just going to a, a lender, for example, Total Financial, and saying, hey, I'm going to use this car for three years and 36,000 miles. I don't want to use it anymore. And the lender knows something that I'm sure you know as well. The vehicle is going to depreciate over that time, the older the vehicle gets, and the mileage you put on, the more wear and tear you put on. So they can make you guesstimation on how much the vehicle is going to be worth at the end of that term. So you're simply just paying for what you're using. Now, what is best for which kind of person? Cash, if you have a ton of cash saved away, that might work. But again, generally speaking, cash isn't always the best option because you can pay your loan off early, get charged less interest, help your credit because you had a uh, a frequent payment that you made on time and paid it off early, which looks great to lenders, especially for people who don't do a lot of lending. It's always good to have a few new things that you're paying on to keep your credit fresh. Plus it keeps cash in your pocket. There's a lot you can do with cash in your pocket, including invest it and make more money than what you would have been charged on interest. So cash doesn't always make sense even when it seems to. Financing is a great option for a lot of people, especially people who plan on keeping their vehicle. Leasing isn't always the best option if you're going to end up having the vehicle for seven years. Sure, you could lease it then pay it off, but at the end of the day, you probably would have spent a little bit more money than you would have if you just bought it in the first place and got a loan on it. But last is leasing, which is my personal favorite. It gives you the ability to always have a newer car, switch cars. Um, sometimes it really makes a difference, especially if you're trying to get a really low payment and you do have a down payment. That down payment makes a bigger dent in what your lease payment's gonna be than if you finance, given the fact that it's a shorter term on a short, smaller amount of money. 
which with that being said too, the last thing you can always do is just pay the most of the lease off in one check and have a ridiculously small payment. That's what I like to do. The big advantage to that leasing is again, one, you just graduated from college. I'm sure you could all imagine the scenario and you're going to work. You don't need a fancy big old Sequoia minivan truck, whatever it might be, but you do know that down the road, you might plan on having kids or you're gonna upgrade it to a truck that you've always wanted. It might make a heck of a lot more sense to lease a vehicle knowing, okay, so I got three years with this car and afterwards I can just wipe my hands free and clear of it and get into the truck I want. Or many other scenarios as such. The last thing I want to mention with your lease is if you currently are leasing or you're planning on leasing, just because the bank said it's going to be worth a certain amount by the end of it, doesn't always mean it's worth that amount, especially with Toyotas, which keep in mind, I can never promise anything that's going to happen to your lease ever. The market is like the housing market, everything goes up and down. But generally speaking, throughout my years of working for Toyota, Toyota has the, one of the highest chances of you having what's called equity in your lease. So your lease is coming up and the bank says to buy this vehicle at the end of the lease, which is going to be the amount they thought it was worth, right? You can give us that money and the vehicle is yours. And you can finance that amount, you can pay cash for that amount, but you can buy your lease at the end. What a lot of people don't look into, and you guys should come on over, whether it's a Toyota or any other lease, come on down, take a look, see if you have equity. You might actually be surprised that your vehicle might be worth a grand more, four grand more, two grand more, whatever it might be and you can actually trade it in for your next lease or your next car that you might actually be purchasing and get some essentially free cash for ending your lease, having us buy it out, give you that equity for you, and then you can apply that to your next purchase. An absolute excellent idea to go ahead and do that. Now, I know I've given a lot of information really quickly, but I myself and the rest of the team are very knowledgeable on leasing, financing, or whatever it might be. So if it's your first time or your hundredth time leasing or purchasing, please come on by, call us at 262-334-9411, ask for sales or schedule an appointment with us so that way we can sit down and talk about your options and see what makes the most sense for you because every single one works better for a different person, especially to get back to the lease, you might just put a ton of miles in your vehicle. Won't, won't make sense, we would even tell you that. Or Maybe you don't put hardly any miles on at all. Leasing might make the most sense because even if you drive it less than what you said you would, there's a further increase in chance that you'd have that equity at the end of the lease. I know there's tons of customers of ours that I've purchased off their lease, applied the equity to their next lease, and actually they managed to lower their payment or get into something nicer, and they're pleasantly surprised about that. I mean, who doesn't want free cash? So again, 262-334-9411. Any questions at all about cash purchases, financing, or leases. We have all the answers for you. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helped at least somewhat. Enjoy the rest of your day.